Welcome to Fly Tying with Whiting. We've got another live view session for you tonight. And today we're going to be tying the life cycle of Calabatus. Uh, this is a great uh, mayfly series of patterns that works for our most prolific uh, mayfly in most of my area lakes. I'm Phil Fisher. I'm coming to you from Central Oregon tonight and we have a number of really really good um, Cascade Lakes in our area including Crane Prairie and Wikiup and Hosmer and East Lake and Lava Lakes and so on and so forth um, most of which sport excellent Calabatus hatches and so this is one of our most important series of mayflies throughout the uh, late spring and early summer, midsummer, and ex uh, often extending into fall until the snow flies. Um, we'll have Calabatus hatches pretty reliably. Our hatch on East Lake, which is probably our best Calabatus fishery, happens in uh, starting in early June and it peaks in that late June early July time period and it's an excellent time to be here in fish Calabatus. I'm going to tie a whole series. I'm going to start with a nymph. I'm going to tie a soft tackle. I'm going to tie a um, two cripple patterns. I've got one that's a unique kind of bad haircut cripple I call it. It's a pullover cripple and a Quigley style cripple. I'm going to tie a paradun and lastly I'm going to tie a spinner pattern. So join me and tie along as we um, experiment with Calabatus. So before we get started tying, let me introduce the materials I'm going to use uh, across this series of patterns. A lot of the materials I'm going to use are common to each one of the Calabatus life cycle pattern. So let me start with a hook. I'm going to use a fire hole uh, 718. This is a curved shank, um, 2x long, a little heavy wire hook. Uh, that I like a lot for my nymphs. It sinks and gets down nicely. Um, so we'll use that one for the nymph patterns. I'm going to use a uh, fire hole dry fly um, 419 hook for the dry flies that we're going to tie today. These are both um, competition barbless hooks. I use barbless on almost all my fly patterns nowadays because it's just gentler on the fish to release them. For the abdomen on all of these patterns I'm going to use a Spirit River turkey um, feather. I'll use the leading edge biot for some of these patterns and I'll use the trailing edge of the feather for some of these patterns. And so um, I'm going to uh, show you how we use that on the different patterns as we move along. For the thorax, I'm going to use a Calabatus uh, super fine dubbing. This is kind of a light grayish olive dubbing that I, I like for my Calabatus. And I'm going to blend that with a little bit of UV ice dub. And this UV ice dub is in Calabatus and it adds a little life signature to your patterns and I found it really really effective. Now I'm going to rib some of the biots with uh, wire to add more color but also to add strength to the pattern and so you'll see me use that. I'm also going to use a Danville tobacco brown uh, thread in 6 aught. Uh, this is a flat wax thread that I, I like for my Calabatus. 
the rest of the materials all introduce that are unique to an individual pattern and particularly the whiting hackles and feathers that I'm going to be using I'll introduce those as I uh, get ready to tie each pattern because I'm going to use different materials on each fly or different whiting uh, materials on each fly. So let's get started tying. Okay, so this first pattern we're going to tie is a Calabatus Nymph. Um, this is a pattern I use a lot in the early season. And it's tied with a biot, it's tied with um, some whiting schlappen. And I'm going to introduce a number of different whiting products tonight as I tie through the various patterns uh, in the Calabatus life cycle. The very first one will be Schloppen. And Schloppen is a long webby feather behind the um, behind the saddle hackle but before the tail. And you can see the characteristics of this hackle. It's a nice long, long hackle. And it's very, very webby, almost entirely webby. And I like this because of that web for my mayfly nymphs. So I'm going to use this for the tail. Um, we'll use it uh, down toward the bottom where I get a little fluffy feathers. And then we'll use it for the legs as we tie this pattern. So let's go ahead and get started on this pattern. This is my little Calabatus Nymph, um, one I like a lot. I'll often hang this under a strike indicator and uh, do short little pulls, maybe uh, six inch little strips with it and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to start this fly with about six or seven wraps of a non-toxic um, lead wire, or not lead, but a non-toxic wire. And one thing I want you to note as I'm tying this, I, I pinch the um, wire with the tag ends facing upwards. And what that basically does is it gives me a full half wrap in the front and a half wrap in the back of this pattern. I can take my scissors and smooth out that uh, wire just slightly and then I'm going to cover it up a little bit. Now for the tail on this pattern, I'm going to reach into my whiting schloppen and you see this soft stuff right down toward the very base of the feather. I'm going to strip off some of that material for my tail. I like that little soft material for a tail on a nymph because it uh, the Calabatus mayfly has very substantial uh, gill structure and this helps create the image of that gill structure uh, to some extent. And so we'll tie that on right at the tail set position. I like to pre-cut a lot of my materials. I want to tie this on right behind the wire and start getting rid of that goiter I've established uh, with that wire. And so I'm going to tie that on right behind it and wind back up to the base. So the next material I'm going to use is some bronze wire. This is a biot pattern and I like to add some strength and stability to biots when I tie them on a fly. And so I'm going to tie on some wire which we'll use to wrap over my biot when I tie that in. So moving right along, I'm going to take uh, the Spirit River um, 
turkey that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to tie this in with the leading edge of that biot facing forward and the trailing edge facing backwards. Now the very first ramp I take with this material, it's going to fold on me so the leading edge will be backwards and the trailing edge forwards. Um, you can look at it from the perspective one side is opaque and one side is uh, more translucent. Uh, the more translucent side may have a little notch on it. And so you can see how that folded over. And now as I wind this forward, I've got some very nice segmentation appearing in this pattern. And I'm going to wind it all the way up to and onto that thorax area. And then I'm going to tie it off by winding over the top of that biot first, right where it's supported on the hook itself. Um, if I cross my thread against this biot, it acts as a razor blade, and it'll uh, it'll cut that biot right off. And so I can pre uh, I can avoid that particular issue um, just by tying right on top of the uh, hook as I lay it onto the biot itself. Now I brought this bronze wire, and this is where I'm adding strength. To that biot and see I'm I'm following the path of the biot real close to that segment and this is doing two things for me it is adding strength to the biot it'll break very easy in trout teeth and so I want my flies to last more than one trout hopefully a whole bunch of trout and um, also we want the um, the segmentation that that really emphasizes and you can see that in the picture. So next I'm going to move into my turkey tail and you see that sheen on the upper part of that turkey tail? It's, um, it's really got a lot of natural flashback to it. Well I'm going to take advantage of that for my wing case on this pattern. And so I'm going to clip that off or clip off a, a section of that turkey tail and I'll tie it in with that shiny side facing backward and the dull side facing forward. Um, and then when I fold it over to create the um, to create the wing case that that flashback or that shiny area will come through. Now I also mentioned that I'm using a blend of Superfine and um, a UV Calabatus uh, dubbing. And so I take and felt out about 75% of the Superfine and a few fibers of the uh, UV to use for the thorax of this pattern. I tie UV in an awful lot of my mayfly patterns. It just adds that life signature that we're looking for. And I'm going to start that right up at the very front of that um, thorax. And then I'm going to spin that and create a yarn and hang on to it. So it's nice and tight on my thread. And so I'll spin that all the way and then I can wind back toward the uh, front of the pattern. And so that'll create my thorax. Now I mentioned earlier I showed you a picture of our um, of our schloppen. Now I've taken my schloppen and I've trimmed off a little wedge of it. You can see that on the piece that I've got holding up here. And so that's going to form the legs on this pattern. And I'm using the stem of the schloppen to basically hold that in place. 
So I can take that schloppen and set it down on either side to form the legs on this pattern. And then I, I can reach in and tie that real tightly against the hump on this fly. And get those, those legs to splay out on either side of the pattern nicely for me. And I'll trim off the excess and clean up that head just a little bit. Tying live with a uh, macro lens is a risky proposition because this macro lens shows off all the imperfections in your fly patterns. Um, but that's okay. The next I've taken that flashback and I folded it over. And I'll trim that off. And then I'll clean up this head just slightly. And I'm going to drop into a whip finish. And so that's our almost finished Calabatus Mayfly. I tied that off with a uh, a whip finish just using my fingers. I never learned how to use a whip finish tool um, and so I just tie it off very quickly with two whip finishes and that'll never come loose. So the very last step is to seal that wing case with some UV resin. I'm using Solara's uh, Bone Dry and it's it's a really good material for this particular pattern and I'll go ahead and cure that with my with my UV light for a few seconds and then let's spin this around in the vise so you can get a chance to see the Calabatus Nymph. That dark wing case, as mayflies emerge, very often the wing case for uh, mayflies darkens up, and that's the reason we use that very dark uh, color on the wing case. And so that's a, a good tip as you're tying your mayfly nymphs, uh, and in this case, Calabatus mayfly nymph. So the next pattern in our series is a small little soft tackle. Um, I'm tying this on a curved hook. Um, I add just a little bit of weight to this fly and I'm using another uh, whiting saddle. Um, this off a Brahma hen, a uh, Brahma hen saddle. And you can see the kind of real nice grayish tones to this particular saddle. It's got some speckling and just full of life. And so I like this a lot for my little soft tackle Calabatus. This is a fly that I use um, very often uh, stripped behind a woolly bugger. One of, one of the things I find is fish tend to uh, be attracted to the larger woolly bugger and follow it and then spot the smaller calabatus mayfly and they typically take the calabatus. Um, we also use this a lot wind drifting on our area lakes. We'll throw out a wind sock and let the wind push us along at a very slow uh, drift with an intermediate line. Excellent technique for kids particularly. And so we'll, we'll put on a little Calabata soft tackle and wind drift it. Um, I remember some days up on East Lake with my young nephews just catching kokanee salmon and rainbow trout and brown trout one after the other on this particular pattern as we wind drifted off an area called the Hump um, in the lake. So real, real good little pattern. So let's move along to our soft tackle. 
I'm going to start this very much in the same way that I did the nymph. Um, we're going to finish it slightly different. And I'm going to use that Whiting Brahma uh, saddle that I showed you a few minutes ago. So I'm going to start tying right at the head. I use my scissors to bend down and flatten that wire. And I've used the thread to begin proportioning this pattern. I want to, want to reserve that area for the head. I'm going to need to tie my soft hackle in there. And I don't want to invade that space uh, before I get there. So I've taken one of my Brahma hen feathers here and I'm going to get, just grab a few barbs to create a nice sparse tail on this pattern. And I'll pre-trim it and tie that in place. Then I want to tie in my wire. I'm going to run through these next couple of steps fairly quickly because they mirror the, the nymph pattern that we tied. I'll go ahead and uh, add the biot on this fly again with that opaque side facing forward and the translucent side facing backward to somewhat take advantage of the segmentation that a biot can offer. And again that first wrap is going to fold that biot the opposite way so now the um, opaque side is facing backward and the translucent side is facing forward. And we'll wrap that right up onto that little non-toxic lead. If I can get that to lie right. And I'll tie that off before I cross that biot underneath, I've tied it off right on top of the biot so I don't shave it off with this thread acting like a razor blade. And then I'm going to go ahead and rib this fly with my uh, wire all the way up to the thorax position. You can see I'm using a Danville uh, 6 watt um, flat wax thread here for this particular pattern uh, in a tobacco brown. And I like this color. A lot of mayflies have that coppery tobacco brown colored um, eyes on them. And so this just adds a little bit of that character to the pattern. So let's tie the thorax and I'll wind that all the way forward. So I've got a nice sparse but that thorax is definitely uh, there. So next I'm going to prepare this hackle. Take my scissor or my uh, hackle pliers and grip it in the hackle plier and then I'll release it and I'm going to cut a little tab end on there and I'm going to tie in right at that tab end um, and the reason I do that is that gives something for this thread to bite into. If you tie it into a blank stem or rachis on this feather it will uh, oftentimes slip on you and so that gives this something to grab onto. Now I'm going to take all this material and I'm going to fold it 
backwards, grab all the barbs and fold them, pull them all backward and go ahead and wind just two wraps on this. So I'm going to bring that up, I'm going to cross that feather and then I'm going to bring that back toward me. And why did I do that? Basically I'm trying to cross just the stem and not any of the barbs. I don't want to leave a messy head. And that gets a lot more important as we get into dry flies when we're working in very tight quarters up in that head area. Um, got two barbs I missed with that initial cut. So now let me clean up this head. And we'll tie a couple of whip finishes. So that's our little Calabeta soft tackle. And I use this, as I mentioned, uh, wind drifting quite a bit, especially with newer fly fishers that have challenges casting. Like if I've got enough wind, I can wind drift this and they're, they're fly fishing, but we're basically trolling. And so just to spin this around in the vise, you can see all sides of it. And so that's our little Calabeta soft tackle. Excellent pattern. Catch a lot of fish on this. Um, kokanee salmon up in East Lake particularly like this pattern. And so we'll take a lot of kokanee on it. The next pattern in our series is a cripple pattern. Um, I've done some filming up on our aerial lakes and rivers. And when I zoom in really, really tightly on the trout and see those bugs drifting by or coming up in lakes, I'm always just stunned at what they're taking. 90% uh, of the time during a hatch, I see them taking cripples. Um, and so this first pattern, first cripple pattern that I'm tying is, I, I've nicknamed a bad haircut Calabatus cripple. It's a pullover pattern. Um, from the top, it looks like a, uh, it's had a bad haircut. But from the bottom, from the trout's vision, it's an excellent little fly. And uh, one that catches a lot of fish for me. It somewhat emulates a Pablo's cripple, um, but not entirely. This is my own style of tie, and uh, one I'll use quite a bit during hatch phases on Calabatus. Now the next uh, material I'm going to use is a whiting dry fly saddle. Uh, this particular saddle produces feathers in the 14 and 16 range, um, which is just perfect for Calabatus. Um, Calabatus tend to begin the season a little bit bigger, and as the season progresses they get a little bit smaller. Some of our waters feature uh, Calabatus in size 12s, and then they dip to 14s, 16s, and sometimes even late in the season, 18s. And so for the bad haircut portion of this fly, I'm going to use a whiting dry fly saddle. Um, now that, that saddle is in a grizzly dyed dun, which is an excellent color combination for Calabatus mayflies. Okay, our next pattern we're going to tie is that bad haircut cripple pattern. So I'm going to begin by setting proportions. Um, I want to reserve that area forward of the fly for uh, the wing and uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and begin tying with my Zelon. I gotta find it first on my desk. I get creating fly patterns and I get a very, very messy desk. I have pulled um, about a, a full hank of this Zelon material I get from Blue Ribbon Flies in Montana. And so that full hank I'm gonna split into two 
and I'm going to use half of it for a trailing shuck. I want the image of a trailing shuck, but I don't want this to overwhelm the pattern. Um, it's giving a perception that this mayfly is emerging in the surface film. And so I want to have a nice trailing shuck about the length of the body on this mayfly. And so I'll tie that in. Next I'm going to tie with my biot. Except um, instead of the biot coming from the leading edge of the turkey feather, I'm going to tie it with the trailing edge. And what that does for me is it gives me a little bit finer segmentation. As a mayfly emerges from nymph to a dun, and that's the process we're going through right now, it's going to get smaller and a little more delicate each time it emerges um, from its uh, shuck. So I'm also not going to use any wire on the biot. So I'm going to add a little crazy glue underneath this as we tie just to give it some strength and durability. That biot can break very easy in trout teeth. And I'll wind that forward. And you can see the winds on this are just subtly more delicate and a little smaller than I had on the nymph pattern. So I also shifted hooks. I went to a dry fly style hook um, that's 1x long. The nymph hook I was using was a 2x uh, long hook. Um, and so uh, it is a little bit smaller in stature as these nymphs emerge to a mayfly. When they shed that exoskeleton, they become smaller as, um, as a mayfly. So I'm going to tie on my wing at this point in time. I'm using that Zelon again. Uh, and I've taken the full hank for the wing. I don't want to shortcut this one. So now I've taken a, a dry fly saddle and I'm going to go ahead and prepare that and ready it to tie on. Now if anything I oversized this slightly. So I'll go ahead and strip some barbs off the stem. I'm going to tie that in right back to that wing. Now here's kind of a little trick that I've learned in tying this given pattern. I'm going to use my hackle pliers and they act as a nice platform. I'm not sure you can see this fully in the uh, in the video but that's what I'm basically doing is I've got my hackle pliers around that Zelon and I'm going to pull that directly upright and then I'll tie this hackle on leading up the Zelon. So I'll tie maybe five or six wraps upward and then wraps to bring me down to that hook and then I'll go ahead and tie this hackle off. And I'll trim off the excess. Any stray barbs, this is a good time to, to trim them out. All right, now I'm going to again take my mix of super fine and UV dubbing and I'm going to tie that in to create the thorax on this pattern. So I'll spin that nice and tight. I'm going to pull this hackle out of the way. I'll tie that all the way back to cover up that thorax area and then let's wind all the way back 
to the head on this pattern. So next I'm going to gather all of those fibers and I'm going to pinch them very tightly back in the hook and I'll fold that down just underneath the eye of the hook to kind of act as a handle and tie that off. So you can see I've got collected all that material um, on this pattern. And now here's the trick part. I'm going to use this Zelon to act as my pullover. And I'm going to support the hook and I'm going to pull that very sharply forward to create that pullover style. So let's drop into a whip finish here. I'm going to support that wing and pull it out of the way so it's not getting wrapped up in my my head. I'm tying this whip finish right in front of that wing so that it it supports it upright or pushes it a little bit upright and again couple whip finishes and I'll trim that off now I'm going to trim the wing to be facing somewhat upward so this is our little bad haircut uh, cripple so let me turn this around in the vise so you can see from the top it looks a little bit like a bad haircut but from the bottom that the trout see it's got a really nice profile of an emerging uh, calabatus mayfly and so this is a pretty cool little pattern and one I like a lot for uh, fishing during a mayfly hatch so that's your bad haircut calabatus pullover the second cripple I'm going to tie tonight is a Quigley style cripple calabatus. Um, this probably is my number one producer on our area lakes. It just catches fish. Um, I tie this again with a biot. It's got a trailing shuck. Um, it's got uh, a wing out front that's out of deer hair. Once again, on this particular pattern, I'm using my Whiting uh, Dry Fly Saddle in a Grizzly Dunn, um, which just works super for it. I like to typically undersize the hackle on my cripples so they float just a touch lower in the water. And, uh, and so that is our little Calabatus Quigley style cripple that I like a lot that will tie. So the next cripple pattern I'm tying is our Quigley style cripple. Day in and day out during a Calabatus mayfly hatch, I'll tell you this is probably my number one producer. Um, it is really a good pattern. Uh, I had uh, Tom Ski and uh, his significant other Sherry up to East Lake last year. Tom is our whiting protein manager, and uh, we had a ball catching rainbows on this little Quigley style cripple pattern. And I'll I'll kind of rush through some of the early steps because it's tied very similar to what I just did. I'm going to tie in my biot. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed on the on the film, I am always carrying my uh, scissors in my hand all the time. That doesn't show up real well on the video, but I keep my scissors in my hand all the time as I'm tying. It's one of the tools that you use most often in tying flies, and you become a lot more efficient by keeping your scissors in your hand as you're tying. It's one of the things I learned very early on in my tying career and I became a, a pretty good commercial tire over time um, and it's not because I tie fast it's because I tie efficiently and there's a big difference. 
Um, I've seen people who tie really fast, and I can't keep up with them. But I've seen people who don't tie efficiently really spin their wheels in tying or pushing out a dozen flies at a session. And so tying efficiently is an important part of fly tying. It's having all your materials uh, located in one particular area so you're not hunting and pecking for them each time. Um, and it's keeping your tools always in the same place on your uh, tying table so you can find them quickly as you're getting ready to, to tie a given pattern. So, all right, pretty much imitated what we did to date. Um, however, I'm going to move on and tie this in a Quigley style cripple. And in order to do that, I'm going to use some whitetail deer for the wing on this pattern. As I clean this hair, I've probably thrown away about half of it because I just want to work with the tips. The, all the under fur we want to get rid of and eliminate from the hair. And so if I do a good job, I'm going to have a nice wing emerge out of my stacker. So I've stacked that hair. I've chosen out just a, a fairly trim bunch. And as always, I got one broken tip. And I'm not going to fight it. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie that in right behind the head area on this fly. And then I'm going to wind backward. If that rolled a little bit, I can roll it back. I'm going to wind backwards back to the thorax area. And you'll note I haven't let go. Um, I went ahead and, and trimmed that off to give me that nice, um, nice little platform in between the, um, or where I'm going to lay the hackle in on this pattern. Now I like to undersize the hackle on this style of cripple. Um, if anything, I'm going with a size 16. Maybe a, a little bit smaller than a 14, which is the size I'm tying on. And I'm going to go ahead and set that in, um, or tie that in right on that flat spot. Now, before I get started with this hackle, just a, a moment on hackle prep. Can you all see how I've prepped that hackle? I've uh, stripped some of the barbs off the stem, and I've stripped some more off the bottom of that stem. And those are the very first, that's the very first portion of the, the hackle that's going to lay on this fly. Well, very often those barbs don't quite know where to lay right. And so I'm going to head off an issue and I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate those or trim those out. Now I'm going to wind this right over that flat area. And you notice I'm always winding at 90 degrees to the hook shank. If you wind at an angle to the hook shank, you're going to go ahead and roll that hackle and your uh, your hackle barbs will go cattywampus. So I'm going to wind that forward. I'm going to jump in front of that wing with my stem and tie that off with a couple of wraps. And then I'll reach in here and whip finish. So if I do a really good job, I won't catch any barbs. Or if I do, I see one or two I caught. And we'll do a second whip finish right there in front of the wing. And in front of the wing does a couple things for me. It helps set that wing up right um, just a bit.
The broken tip is going to drive me crazy. Oh well. Can't do too much about it now. Um, so in any event, that's our Quigley style cripple. And I missed cutting off a couple of barbs here. So let me clean that up. And I'll spin that around in the vise so you can see all sides of this Quigley style cripple. This is probably my number one uh, pattern for Calabatus during the hatch period. Really a good one. As we move on in, the, in hatch phases on Calabatus, um, as I move away from cripples and on to duns, the next fly I'm going to tie is just a regular style um, Calabatus parachute pattern. And I'm going to use another whiting material uh, for the tail on this pattern. I've got some, um, a Coupe de Leon saddle. And down toward the base of this saddle, I've got just a few more tan uh, feathers with lots of speckling. Uh, Coupe de Leon is, is super for tailing because it, um, it is more stiff than almost any other hackle that we produce. And so it really provides super support for the fly. I might also use, instead of a full-blown saddle, I might use a whiting tailing pack. And uh, let me go grab one and I'll show you that one. I also often use a whiting tailing pack and this again is Coque de Leon and uh, again these barbs are quite a bit stiffer so when I'm fishing dry flies for tailing material that's going to really help support the fly on the water. You can see some of this material just the strength of the barbs and really does a nice job of tying tails on mayflies. Now fishing. Um, fishing the dun pattern. I just showed you a cripple and I've got a dun here. Um, the dun pattern and cripples and ultimately spinners are often on the water at the same time. And so when I fish Calabatus, nine times out of ten, I'm fishing a dry, dry in tandem. I put a dropper fly of usually my cripple pattern, and I might use the dun as the top fly. Um, and I give them a choice. Some fish get very selective in their feeding behaviors, and they're going to feed strictly on cripples or on duns or on spinners. And so if I offer two different stages of the insect on the end of my fly line, I double my chances of having a fish take. And so often I'll fish dry, dry in tandem, and I might fish a dun and a spinner. I might fish a dun parachute and a cripple. Um, I, I mix it up a little bit just depending on what the trout want on that given day. So we're going to move on down the hatch cycle just a little bit beyond the cripple stage. I'm now going to move into and tie a Calabatus parachute mayfly done pattern and show you how I do it. Um, there are lots of different ways to tie um, parachute patterns, but I'll show you what I've, I learned years ago and how I tie them. I'm going to start by selecting out some material for the wing, and I'll clean that well. I'm going to throw away probably um, half of the material, half of the under, under fur, and Okay, let's stack that hair in my hair stacker. So you can see that coming out of my stacker a whole lot cleaner. 
as I stack all those tips. I'm going to tie that on right at the wing set position. I'll uh, wind through the butts and trim off the excess and then I'll wind over those butts and I'll leave a little goiter and I'll show you how to repair that here in a, in a few minutes as we tie the rest of the fly. So then I'm going to stroke all this material back and I'll build a small little cone in front of and I'll drive some wraps of thread right into the base of that to try and set it upright. And next, I'm going to post that. So I'm going to take some relatively soft wraps. You can see how I've got my bobbin oriented. I can, I can make these wraps really soft and I'll build up a little base um, right around where I'm going to ultimately tie my um, my wing on to this fly. So I've taken my whiting tailing pack and I've selected out some fibers of this Coque de Leon Grizzly. I like this a lot for Calabatus. You can see I've got a nice tight little compact tail might have a couple more fibers than I like for a, a tail. And I'll uh, proportion that and then I'm going to trade hands and I'm going to trim that off right where that tail is going to tie in right behind the little goiter as we attempt to build up some structure around that goiter so I don't have the big hump in this fly. So I've got another biot. Again, I took this off the trailing edge of the feather. So this is the less substantial barb than those bigger barbs on the leading edge. A little, uh, little less stiff, but a little finer. And so um, I've tied that in. Put just a touch of super glue on that. And then we'll wind this forward through the body. And again, I like this nice trim segmentation that we get from the trailing edge of the turkey feather. And I'll cross that right on top of the hook and then trim off the excess. So let me show you how I tie in a parachute style pattern. I'm going to again use my super fine. And I'll wind several wraps right back there for the um, for the thorax area. I'm going to prepare a feather like I showed you on the last pattern, uh, taking off a few barbs off the underside of this. I'm tying it with the curve facing downward. Now some flight hires like to curve up, others like it down. It's a matter of personal preference. I've often tied, times tied my uh, hackle fibers either way. So I've tied that in with the dubbing mix right in front. And I'm going to start this up, tie that right at the top of the thread base. And I'm going to wind each wind underneath the succeeding. And you can see me dip down underneath and pull that forward. And then I can give it a little tug and tighten that up. And then I'll take and cross 
just the stem of that feather with my thread and I'll trim off the excess. So when I tie um, my whip finish you can see I'm at an angle uh, to the hook shank. I'm not right at 90 degrees. I'm trying to tie along with the direction of the of the hackle barbs and you can see those just sweep right out of the way so that's a little tip when you're tying off your parachutes the other thing I did here that um, isn't immediately apparent I've got a couple of barbs I'm gonna pop out of there that didn't lie right where I want them to um, the other thing I did by winding the hackle on with some dubbing in front of that wing is that dubbing is going to help press that um, hackle upward so it doesn't get tangled up in the head when you tie this off. And so let me spin this around in the vise so you can see this nice parachute pattern. I tend to um, use on a parachute a hackle that's right about the length of the body or just a touch longer. So it's just draping over the entire fly. And so that's our little Calabatus parachute pattern. Excellent fly. As I mentioned earlier, I often fish this in tandem with a cripple. Uh, and so I've got the best of both worlds on the water at any given point in time. So I give the trout a choice. The final pattern in our series tonight, I'm going to tie a spinner pattern. And again, I'll introduce uh, another whiting material. But this is a little mayfly spinner. I'm tying this with a, a split wing out of guinea. I've got a real nice um, split tail on this, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, but the uh, little spinner pattern is an excellent imitation for the Calabatus spinner. Uh, the wing material is tied out of uh, a Whiting Farms guinea. Um, I pick a couple of feathers out of here to create that wing and split that wing. Um, now, Whiting Farms was raising guinea for a period of time, and about a year ago they had quite a bit left in stock. Uh, I know Tom, Dr. Whiting, has stopped raising guinea, uh, but they may still have some of those in stock. I'd have to check to make sure. But nonetheless, I use uh, a guinea feather. That um, Calabatus mayfly is known as a speckled mayfly or a speckled dun. And the speckling on um, guinea really comes across in tying this particular mayfly. It also does not float real well, so you've certainly got to goop it up. I don't have a hackle on this pattern to get it to float like uh, normal. And so um, give this one a try. It's also a really good pattern. I have kind of a neat story about it. I was up on Hosmer Lake one day. And uh, this is some years ago fishing for Atlantic salmon, and we had a really nice calabatus hatch start, and the fish were slurping them. And I cast out toward a rise form, and just about the time my fly hit the water, I heard a big splash behind me, and uh, turned around and here a bald eagle had dipped into the water and caught one of the Atlantic salmon that was feeding and flew over my head at about 15 feet. And as that eagle passed me by, all of a sudden my rod went down and I had a fish on. And it was on this particular Calabatus uh, spinner pattern. I've never forgotten that. And it's, it's one of those really special moments we get out um, fly fishing in our areas. Um, just one of those really cool moments. So the very last pattern in our Calabatus series is a Calabatus spinner. And I'm going to start by setting proportions on this fly. I want to leave that thread right where 
I want the wing to lay. So I've selected out two of my guinea feathers. And I'm going to go ahead and prepare these. I'm going to reach in about the length of the wing into the stem off the tip of this feather and I'm going to trim those out. So you can see that little notch that I've got. Um, what that does for me, those, those uh, stems tend to get bound up and the, they don't look quite right on this pattern as we tie it. So I'm going to eliminate those uh, when I tie this fly. So I've married up those two feathers and I'm going to prepare them by very sharply pulling on the fibers to collect them together and pull them toward the, the uh, tip to create that wing. And I'll tie that in, wind several wraps over, and then I'm going to uh, align my scissors with the body and trim that off. And so I've got a little bit of a tapered uh, goiter on this one. And like I did with the deer hair, I'm going to go ahead and build a, a cone to set that those feathers straight upright. And then I'll reach in with my scissors and I'll manually split the wing into two and I'll figure eight the wing with several wraps to begin to place it where I want it to be. Um, and so you can see that that's starting to emerge as a spinner. So the next thing I'm going to do is post each wing and I'll go ahead and support the wing as I pass and then do a locking wrap and now I'll come to the near wing and I'll post it with several wraps and then I'll tie a locking wrap and so that doesn't tend to unwind on me and so you can see that real real nice spinner wing that's developed out of guinea that really gives this um, fly a nice, nice look on the water for that speckled calabatus done. So I'm going to use micro fibets for a tail. I could very easily tie this with my um, Coque de Leon, but I wanted to show another technique as we tie. And so let's proportion out that tail. I'm going to clip it off. I can kind of slide those wings out of the way so they, they don't get in my way at this point. And I'll tie that off. Now you notice as I'm tying these five bets on, I've lifted... I guess you probably can't completely see that, but I'm lifting and I'm using the thread to drive those fibets down to the hook shank. Um, the reason I do that is we want all those feathers or those fibets to align one next to the other next to the other. So when I split it, I can do a nice um, split. If they get cattywampus and don't lie consecutive on the hook, it can be a bit of a challenge to get these to lay right when I split them. And so now I've manually taken and put two fibets on the far side, two on the near side, and I've done a wrap in between. And now I'll come with more wrap, one more wrap in between, and a locking wrap in between each of those two wraps. And then I'll come with one underneath. And I'll give that one last little tug uh, to try and set that uh, tail in place. Now, if they're straying a little bit apart, and you, you can see very slightly these are, I'm going to cheat. Um, this is a little commercial 
tire trick that I use. I'm going to go ahead and coat the tail with uh, some of my UV resin and I'll spin it just slightly. A UV resin will cause that tail to uh, enjoin like this and you can see now they're they're straight and then I can just very quickly cure that and now I've got a nice firm set of mayfly tails out of my um, out of my microfibat so a little bit of a uh, a commercial tying tip uh, to help you tie better mayfly split tails I could do that with the Coke de Leon, but it, it doesn't quite set as easily. So let's tie on the biot. Let's make sure I've got that opaque side forward and the translucent side back. And I'm going to tie that right back to the tail. I want to avoid impacting that tail at this point in time um, with the biot and then we'll wind that right up to the wing set position. And I'll put that in my hackle pliers and let's wind this biot forward. I'm going to wind right at that tail, but I don't want to do much to touch it. That little glue that I just put on, that super glue, I probably set it right adjacent to the tail. And I might have just very slightly touched the base of the tail. And that's going to seal that uh, tail uh, to have that outrigger shape that mayflies have. So now I've tied my biot. Let's grab some, some of my uh, superfine and my UV dubbing. And we'll... Pinch that onto the thread, and I'm going to tie one wrap over just to catch a couple of tips. And I'll spin that into a nice yarn. And now I'm going to wind in between, behind, in between, behind, and then pull these wings back and make several wraps right into in front of those wings and we'll whip finish here and I'll put a second whip finish just because I'm not using any glue and so two whip finishes are not going to come undone I have found if you don't use glue around the eye of the hook, 99.9% um, .9 of the time you won't have glue in the eye of the hook when you go to tie your leader on uh, out in the evening during a, during a hatch. Nothing more frustrating than that. And so um, I've, I've stopped using a lot of glue up near the head for partially for that reason. So there's our Calabatus spinner pattern. Excellent little fly and one that really does a nice job for us. Um, this fly does not float real, real well, and so you definitely need to add some fly float to it. Um, it doesn't have a nice hackle on it to uh, use the surface tension to support the fly. It's going to lie very low in the water like a spinner. Um, but it's a good little pattern and one I use uh, during a Calabatus spinner fall in our various uh, high cascade lakes.
So that concludes our Calabatus life cycle series. I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, tying mayfly patterns, particularly the Calabatus mayfly. Um, it's an excellent little pattern for our Calabatus hatches uh, here in Central Oregon, but also throughout the United States. Um, I have tied a nymph. I've tied a soft hackle. I've tied a bad haircut pullover cripple. I've tied a Quigley style cripple. I've tied a parachute. And lastly, a spinner pattern. All of which are very, very important throughout the Calabatus life cycle. And certainly during hatch periods, I'll use all of these patterns. The nymph and soft hackle before the hatch gets going. The cripples in the early stages of the hatch and all throughout emergence. The dun I'm often using in tandem with a cripple. And the spinner fall uh, a little bit after the emergence when spinners are on the water and trout get focused in on spinner patterns that won't fly away right as they come up to take the fly. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this um, Tying Live with Whiting, and uh, please check back in as we have more in this series. Thanks.